Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Patriot Show. I'm Anthony Malone, Rogue Warrior, and I have a very special guest this morning on our show, Andy Bricknell. He is a 23-year veteran of the Parachute Regiment, and he is the head of the Dad Dead Mammoth Coffee Company. Hello, Andy. Hi, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, my friend. I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on the show, a veteran-owned company. You've started it all, all up, your, up, up yourself. Uh, fantastic, mate. I've actually spoken a little bit to you anyway. Um, absolutely awesome, mate. Incredible. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's basically, uh, obviously, uh, ex-army, parachute regiment, did 23 years. Um, joined at 16, obviously, like a boy soldier. I left in December 2018. Uh, and prior to that, just so I had something to do when I came out, I started Dead Man of Coffee, uh, which started in August 2018. All right, mate. Um, so give us a little bit about, not a lot of the detail about you know, your service. Obviously, 23 years is a long time, mate. My viewers would, would be interested. Yeah. Where did you do your tours? Uh, so mainly, uh, so I did a couple in Northern Ireland, uh, Kosovo, Sierra Leone, uh, Bosnia, um, Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay, so you've been around the block, you've seen quite a lot of things. Um, sure, yeah. what, what would be the main thing you would have taken away from your military experience? On a personal note, maybe to uh, don't take life too seriously. Okay, uh, yeah. you, I know when some people get out, they're still a bit tunnel vision um, and time in the, uh, the forces. In, in, you know, it goes very quick. One minute I, I was 16, now I'm 42. I left at 40 and it's like, where's the time gone? So even when you are serving, still try to enjoy that. You know, um, yes, it's a, a career, but it's not necessarily your life. You can have other things outside of that, which you, then you can continue once you do get out. So mainly, yeah, just in, enjoy it either side of the spectrum. Uh, and then just take with you whatever knowledge you can. And if you're able to pass any of your skills on, uh, try and do that. Or just make sure you're learning more skill sets to help further field for when you do try and make the transition. Yeah, that, the, that, is a, that is a very good bit of ad advice that you were very successful in the military. You're obviously very successful in the business world with your company. Um, so yeah, you you are an ex example of what can be done as well. Can you tell us a little bit about how your company actually started? Yeah, <laughs> uh, so mainly like all good projects that start, it was on a drunken night. Uh, my sister, my brother-in-law, having a few drinks. I proposed this idea, uh, and then halfway through the evening, my brother-in-law had already. Done a web page for me uh, that's part of his job as a web designer uh, but prior kind of before that and as well as continuing from that uh, i've always had an interest in the veteran coffee side of things um there's loads of out there across the, the world and I, I, I did see a vlog of a, a coffee company over in the states and i was like well okay well if they can do it why can't i or at least have a go um, prior to that as well, I went to Vietnam a few years back, just on uh, an hour and a half, and I visited a coffee farm out there, fascinated about how they do it and their process and everything else. Uh, spent a couple of years getting information. I even had communication with tailors from Harrogate. They gave me some really sound advice. And it went off from there. I bought a secondhand coffee roaster. Obviously not a huge one, but big enough to do the, the small batch that was needed. And just experimented for about a year and a half getting everything else done because it was just me and i was still serving obviously time is quite short so i just did as, as much as i could when, when i could and continued going back to the drunken night it all kind of that was a kickstart as to why this has now been done you've got to do it and it just went on from there to myself designing the logo designing the labels what bags i would use how I would send everything out, uh, what blend of coffee, what coffee beans to use. Uh, I get my coffee beans from Cafe Imports. Um, 
so yeah, it, it just went on from there. And it was a bit of um, a, kind of like a hurricane situation where everything happened just so quick. And then as soon as your product is out there, it's like, wow. Yeah, and you learn things as you go on. Yeah, um, yeah, incredible. You've taken a little idea that you had some of the biggest companies in the world that were actually formed or the idea formed exactly the same as you. One night over a couple of drinks or a bottle of wine, <laughs> idea was hatched. The next day, bang. Ten years later, some of these companies are multi-million pound companies, both in the UK and the United States. I actually yeah. know the CEOs who I'll be interviewing shortly of some of these companies. And the idea, sometimes it works well. An idea and you pull it through and that's it. You've done it. Um, your company logo of the Dead Mammoth Coffee Company, it yeah. really stands out. Can you tell me a little bit about that, please? Sure. Um, especially with regarding the coffee industry for veterans, a lot of them stick to a military kind of tone. And I, I wanted to have a little bit of a niche to steer away from that. Um, I played with a few names, a few different logos, uh, and I thought, right, how can I brand certain things? Um, I like skulls. I have a couple of tattoos with different skulls and things like that. So I looked at different animals or skulls. I looked at a sabre, uh, a sabre tooth, that is, sorry. And obviously the, the word sabre is still kind of got that military tone to it. Uh, I came across a hyena skull. I came across uh, a mammoth skull and I quite liked the mammoth skull and I looked at different pictures, different designs. I gave a design to a, uh, obviously a, a graphic designer for me to play with. And then I just had to think of a name, what would go with said skull. And it kind of worked, it came together. And yeah, the, the skull of dead mammoth coffee was uh, a logo. It was born, for want of a better word. It was, it was born. Hey. Um, on the reference to coffee itself, um, you do not just buy other people's coffee and put your put your logo on it. Can you tell us a little bit about how you actually do your coffee? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I get my coffee beans raw from Cafe Imports. Uh, and I, like I said, I, I bought a roaster, experimented, played with it. And it, is, it does take a long time to get it down to how you want it. And, almost like a science to it in a way uh, and you just have to play with it and be very patient uh, yes and I didn't want to be like other brands out there where they buy beans in bulk relabel it as theirs because anybody can do that um, if, you know if everybody did that and then all the other brands would probably not necessarily be non-existent um, so it just kind of went from there and like I said I saw a vlog from an, an American coffee brand and how they went about it and I thought right I'll give that a go played with it um yeah so with the the coffee you get the client the consumer gets to choose their roast from medium dark and extra dark but I also grind it to their um preference or it can be left as beans yeah okay so your coffee is quite exclusive you actually make it exactly as what your customer is looking for yeah yeah uh i wanted that was actually my sister's idea uh to have that little bit something different um and it, it works it is quite good with coffee that you see in the supermarkets that's already fresh ground that's over roasted uh, which is generic it's because that's what makes it last longer on the shelf Whereas mine and other companies who probably do this as well, like the veteran and all that, et cetera, it's ground to the preference of the consumer of what they want, and then it's shipped out. Um, but yeah, they can have it left as beans if they've got a grinder at home, or, you know, like I said, it's on the website, they pick how they want it ground from uh, Turkish, which is extra fine, all the way up to coarse, which is like crumbs. It's made for different ways of how you're going to use it. If you're going to use a percolator, or a, uh, a cafeteria, or even like myself, I do use the dis the reusable pods. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so, like I said, your coffee is exclusive. I just wanted my viewers to be aware just what what you've actually um, what you've done and what you've accomplished on there. Um, 
there's some incredible photographs out there about you, about yourself and your coffee. If anyone wants to find you on social media, have you got a website, Instagram account? What, what have you got? Yeah, uh, so the Instagram account is just Dead Mammoth Coffee Company, all one kind of like one word. Uh, there's a Facebook page, again, Dead Mammoth Coffee Company. Uh, and obviously the website itself is a deadmouthcoffeecompany.com. Uh, there's even a, a thing I, I called a beanology, which tells you about the beans of where they're sourced as well. Great. Okay. So at least you have some information of what exactly beans you're getting and where it comes from and things like that. So yes, yeah, there's a lot of information on the website. Awesome. So I will I will put that on at the end of the video as well, the interview. Um, I want to take you back just just a little bit. With you being a military veteran of 23 years with a lot of experience uh, from literally all over the world, um, can you tell me how you found the transition from being in the military into civilian street and to being in the business world as well? Yeah, sure. Um... I think with having the coffee kind of helps with the transition because it's keeping you busy. I think a lot of people, men and women, suffer because they, they're kind of stuck or they're not too sure of what to do, even though you do kind of start a process four years, two years prior to leaving. Um, it's always good to have maybe a hobby that will keep you busy prior to getting out. But personally, I found the transition quite easy. You know, there's support out there for those who do suffer, you know. I know, especially in certain regiments, people might be like, oh, I'm not going to go and ask for help. But, you know, help's out there for any veteran feeling lost, you know, out of limbo. You know, you have the Royal British Legion, they're very helpful. You have SAFA. Uh, there's a, another one called The Block, uh, which all three can provide different information even if it's just to talk to someone at the end of a phone call, you know, if you're feeling lost, but they also help with things for, from uh, a career, your next career pathway, so to speak, even down to as little as helping you with accommodation. So it, all it is, it just takes you to get on the phone. Obviously there are websites as well uh, and speak to someone, or even if you just need someone to speak to, uh, you know, there's someone on the phone or those kind of organisations who know what you're going through, know how to relate, as opposed to you going to a family member. Um, I've got, I've stayed in touch with a lot of guys who are still serving, and we always meet up, whether it's down the gym when obviously lockdown wasn't on, or we meet up now and again down one of the pubs, or we go to one of each other's houses for a brew. Uh, it, it's, it's good to have, keep a connection, uh, keep yourself kind of focused. Everyone has their sad down moments it's, it's just finding something that will give you a bit of a push even what with the fitness yeah. so yeah it all depends on, on what you want but there's no shame in asking anybody for, for for help yeah i think that is um that is a very that is a very good message um very direct to to the point as well and that's very important it doesn't matter who you are what services you're from it doesn't matter if if you're from the powers of marines it, it doesn't matter if you need a, if you need help or you're going through an hard time pick up the dog and bone okay there's good charities out there ask for help speak to some of the veterans the veterans that you know as well because guaranteed you're not the only one going through this and a lot of us have gone through this so the boys have got a lot of boys and girls have got a lot of experience out there. So do not just stay inside the house. The other thing that's, in, that's important is, like I said, don't stay inside the house if you're feeling a, a, little, a little bit low, a little bit down. We all get like that on some days. Get your jacket on, get your trainers on or your boots. Go for a walk outside into the park, into the countryside. Obviously, just try and clear, clear your head. And I'll guarantee you, because I do it every day, you'll be feeling a lot better when you come home, you've been out in nature, you've had some fresh air, it helps you. Okay, lads? And if anyone needs anything, um, Patriot is here 24-7. Ping me a private me message or my phone number's all over the place now. Ring me. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. I will always answer it. Um, on on that one, Andy, you 
you you're obviously a very upbeat person positive mindset you focus that's right, that's right. what message just a very short message to any veterans who are coming out of the um, um services any of the um services and they want to make it into the business business world what advice would you g give them i would definitely say make a note of everything you think about everything that what it takes to get to where you want to go uh for example getting a coffee machine getting a website getting a source of the beans etc etc uh, I've got two diaries of literally everything that's in there from designing different things. So definitely take a note of what it is you want to achieve, even like give timelines if you're happy to do that. Uh, but the, the biggest one, I had a bit of a, um, it was a lack of confidence to do it because everyone's like, oh, do I, don't I? Because obviously once you've started something, your friends and family will know about it, especially guys you've served with. And there is always like, well, what do you want to do that for? Um, to have that little bit of a confidence and a bit of a push because it's better to have tried and failed than not tried at all. Um, yeah. So I had, I kept that mindset, which is what I used when I joined uh, the Paris. I was, you know, 16, like that, tiny. Uh, and someone said that quote to me and lo and behold, I joined and here, here I am. So definitely take the, the jump, take the plunge and just keep going forward um you don't need to think about anybody else it's all about you and if you are you know definitely a new veteran or whatever and you've you've come out having that will help you with your transition and it will just keep you motivated it keep you focused if you run out of ideas go for a walk go for a run and you'd be surprised just how much comes when you're on your own having a bit of a breather taking time out whether you're just going for a walk down the local park with your dog or you're on the hills just Take some time out and you'll be surprised at how much that will help. Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of veterans, especially now with the COVID, the situation in the UK, a lot of veterans, um, new and old, are going through some very challenging times. Um, our message is, Andy, just stay positive, looking forward. All this will pass at some point in time. But it's how you come out of it at that end, okay, when this all passes. Positive mindset, one day at a time. You don't have to think weeks and months in advance. Just take one day at a time, yep. get through it, and you will get through it. End of. Okay? Um, Andy, what are your plans? Because I, I know there's an awful lot that's going on with your coffee company, what you want it to do in the future as well. Um, we'll give a little bit of an exclusive here. We actually have some very prominent American actors and actresses who will be on a shooting range in the near future wearing your coffee T-shirts and drinking your coffee on the <laughs> ranges. We're not going to give their names because that's going to be an exclusive on this channel. But your coffee company is going to be seen all over the world. So what other plans have you got as well? Well, firstly, thank you very much. That, that, that's awesome. Um, you know, the coffee might even improve their, their, their shooting. <laughs> exactly. I've seen one of them uh, before already. And <coughs> I think you're right on that one. <laughs> well, obviously, like with most businesses, they want to expand uh, and get it out there more worldwide. You know, I do ship globally. You know, I have, I have, I have orders in Canada, France. Obviously, the States is itself uh, and a couple in Australia. I actually had one, which I was quite surprised, down in um, Tasmania. And I got in touch with the guy and I asked, oh, how did you hear about, you know, uh, Dead Man Life? He said, it's just over social media. It's floating on one of the links um, towards another veteran coffee over in Australia. Uh, but our, uh, with regards to the business, it is trying new blends getting different types of merchandise out there, uh, just ex expanding as a whole, uh, maybe even look at, in time, some kind of shop where people can come in, also similar to a coffee shop, but actually see the coffee in the background getting roasted. So at least that gives them an idea. But obviously, you know, it is, it's not done in uh, bulk and relabeled. It's actually made uh, so people can see that. I don't think there's any cafes that actually have like a coffee roaster where you can actually see it happening while, you know, while you're waiting kind of thing. 
Right, that that is an exclusive. Again, you're going to be roasting your coffee in your own coffee shop. No one's ever done that. Um, I haven't seen it. Not in England, anyway. Um, very that that could be quite interesting as as well. What um so obviously back back to your coffee, obviously. Um, what what kind of coffees are you going to look at in the future? Just different blends mainly, because uh, the, the the beans I'm using at the moment they're a robusta and, and arabica, so it's like a two bean blend. Uh, I've looked into a Vietnamese bean, which I use for one of my coffee bags. So I'll be looking at uh, doing that as loose coffee. Uh, again, just trying something different. Uh, I'm more of a fan of dark, strong coffee, and I know people sometimes are a bit intolerant of strong coffee. So maybe. I've also looked at more milder coffees, uh, blonde coffees where it's less roasted, uh, so you do get more of the caffeine with a less roasted bean. Uh, everything takes time, research, and it is just me. And with everything else that's going on, it, everything just takes time. But eventually, just have a few more blends and a few more choices for people to look at. Okay, um, great. That that has been very interesting, very inf informative. And a lot of people who didn't know about you or realise that you were a veteran-owned company as, as well. That is, um, thank you for sharing that. <coughs> and it's been a it's been a been a pleasure having you on the show as as well, Andy. Um, if you can stay on, on the line, I'm just going to say goodbye to all my viewers. Th thank you for tuning in on this particular interview. Um, I would like to say. Thank you to our sponsors. There is some sponsors and supporters videos of veteran owned companies at the end of the interview. Please take a couple of minutes and have a look at them. Remember, veterans have all worn the uniform. They've all served the country. Please support veteran owned companies, especially with the present climate of the COVID. We all need your help, okay? Okay, everybody, stay safe and I'll speak to you later. Thank you. Thank you very much.